So this data is super, super exciting. I think we saw the first splash of data from cohort K that were presented at ESMO last year. Um, you know, EV103 was looking at the combination, cohort K of EV103 was looking at the combination of pembrolizumab, which has known activity in urothelial cancer and is, a, is an FDA approved agent, and in for, fortimab vidotin, which is an antibody drug conjugate to nectin 4. We saw um, pretty exciting data from ESMO that was presented about the activity of the combination and the frontline setting for patients with cisplatinum ineligible disease, demonstrating a confirmed objective response rate of over 64% um, in this population, which is really quite striking and really long durable responses um, that were observed. Um, you know, there were toxicity, uh, particularly skin reactions, peripheral neuropathy, ocular disorders, but in general, they were lower grade and, and um, uh, fairly well maladed well managed. And I think patients who have cisplatinum ineligible disease are really an unmet need. And so I think this is just a huge, um, you know, advancement in the field and is certainly kind of bringing up a lot of questions about what's the best frontline strategy. There's currently a large phase three trial currently ongoing called EV302. And EV302 is actually looking at this combination in the frontline setting, but in both cisplatinum eligible and ineligible patients. So patients are randomized to receive um, infortimab, dotin plus pembrolizumab versus cisplatinum or carboplatinum, depending on their ability to receive cis plus gemcitabine. So that trial is gonna be critically important in answering what's the role of this combination in um, you know, a larger patient population. You know, one of the issues with this trial EV302 is it does not allow for maintenance of lulumab um, based off of the black javelin bladder 100 data. We um, have now seen that sort of the new standard of care is, you know, platinum-based combination therapy with either cis um, or, or uh, uh, carbo for uh, patients who are chemotherapy eligible plus gemcitabine. And then um, for those patients that don't have primary progressive disease, um, putting them on maintenance um, of Ulamab. So the 302 trial does not allow for the maintenance of Ulamab. So there will continue to be that outstanding question of, um, you know, what do you do in the maintenance setting? Um, but I think this is a huge win for, for uh, the field and for patients. I think the data are quite exciting. Um, and I think it's a pretty, pretty bold move um, to, uh, you know, um, uh, challenge cisplatinum in the frontline setting um, because if it's just longstanding, um, you know, history and, and great efficacy. So I think this is going to really change the way we approach patients with advanced urothelial carcinoma.